Mr Chair, um, just speaking to um, Clause 3, Mr Quinn seems to have a problem with women in this House, Mr Chair. He's constantly um, interjecting whenever a woman gets to her seat on this side of the House. He's not on the side of a rugby field, so I prefer if he was quiet when we started out on our speeches. Thank you very much, Mr Quinn. Anyway, Mr, um, Mr Chair, I'm just um, standing to discuss the Sentencing and Parole Reform Bill. Um, with regards to Clause 3, discussing the purpose of this bill, um, with Part A of it being to deny parole to certain repeat offenders and to offenders guilty of the worst murders, and with B, to impose maximum terms of imprisonment on persistent repeat offenders who continue to commit serious violent offences. And I guess um, the, the overarching concern has to be, Mr Chair, um, that initially this entire bill, in its entirety, and with, with regards to this particular clause, um, was, um, has been pushed forward by the ACT Party and supported by the National Party because of the fact that it was deemed to be um, in their view, some sort of deterrent with regards to crime. And it's unfortunate, Mr Chair, I just want to say um, from the outset um, that um, all of the experts that have come through have said that in no way will this bill um, work with regards to um, being a deterrent with regards to crime. So I just need to say that from the um, outset, Mr. Mr Chair. Now, Mr Chair, um, our concern with regards to the purpose that this bill has outlined is with respect to um, some of the conditions that the bill later on sets out with regards to what the different, um, what the different um, offences will be, Mr Chair. Um, we have some concerns around the fact that, um, that we do think that with respect to this bill that guilty plea should be factored into the sentencing and that's something that um, we've actually put an amendment forward on, Mr Chair. Um, the amendment that we put forward would allow the court to take into account a guilty plea and reduce a sentence as a result. Um, the proposed legislation does not currently provide any incentive to plead guilty, and officials have been warned that it will result in a decreased number of guilty pleas. And that's a concern that we on this side of the House have, Mr Chair, because of the fact that more guilty pleas will be expensive for the state as there will be more um, defended hearings and it will also um, drag out the case um, for the victims and bring more pain to the victims. And, and along the way we've heard from the other side of the House that um, these punitive measures in some way are supposed to um, bring justice to the victims, but I can't see how that will happen, Mr Chair, if they're going to be dragged through the mud um, on, on, um, in, in these particular cases, Mr Chair. I mean, obviously, um, the offender is not going to want to um, go get these strikes against their name because of the fact that um, there are going to be harsher penalties at the end, so they're more likely um, to not get, uh, plead guilty, and therefore those victims are going to be dragged along as, as they as the case is drawn out, and then later on what we're going to see is more appeals being made as well. And that's basically just going to result in the victims having to relive this over and over again, Mr Chair, and that's something that we on this side of the House are very concerned about. Um, we're also concerned about um, a few other things, Mr Chair, including the fact that um, we do think that one of the things that should be excluded from this bill is um, accidental and, and negligent manslaughter. Now, Mr Chair, I, I think everyone in this House would agree that manslaughter is an extremely varied offence which can range from vicious assaults to um, tragic accident. And its sentences for manslaughter are also extremely diverse, from preventative detention at the most serious end of the scale to um, community services and some uh, service in some cases of accidental manslaughter, Mr. Chair. So I just think it's important to um, talk about some of these aspects of the bill in relation to what we're talking about when we actually look at the purpose of this bill, and that being um, where we impose maximum terms of imprisonment on persistent repeat offenders who continue to commit serious violent. Offenders. So, I mean, I guess it's, uh, it's uh, in talking about this, we're discussing what that side of the House determines as being a serious offence. And we on this side think that because of the, um, the varied offence that manslaughter is in relation to, um, in to, in relation to whether it can, be, it can be accidental or it can, be, it can be negligent, that we do need to take that into consideration, Mr Chair. Now, some would argue 
that um, if it's the third offence, then the offender deserves what they get because they uh, have here. Uh, Honourable Judith Collins. Oh, Mr Chair, I'll just take the opportunity to address some of the issues raised by the previous speakers as to the purpose of this bill. Uh, the, quite clearly, this government is, is very serious about repeat violent offence, offenders and making sure that we have penalties that uh, fit the fact that these people have continued to commit violent offences where there are victims. Every one of the 40 offences listed actually is a serious violent offence, um, either of a sexual nature or of a, of a, uh, a non-sexual nature. They are all serious. There are, for those people who uh, the issue has been raised about a manslaughter and whether that could be excluded for accidental negligent manslaughter, well, there is a degree of negligence required to establish liability for manslaughter. That's one of the differences between uh, manslaughter and murder. That's why there is, in fact, a provision in terms of the sentencing that's actually in the bill presented to the House now to differentiate manslaughter from murder. There's also opportunities in the uh, charging of offenders, which um, in the third stage, for any third strike, the police will be referring those matters to the Crown Solicitor for a review of the charging so that there isn't an overcharging. So in the case of somebody where there is a true negligence situation, to make sure that those people are not overly charged and therefore given um, a very long sentence. I've heard a lot about victims. Uh, actually, 93% of the submitters to this bill, to the Select Committee, supported the bill. Uh, many of those people are victims and victims' families. On the basis that's been, of the argument that's been put today or this afternoon about uh, that offenders will not plead guilty, they'll plead not guilty, uh, well, actually, they do now. They already plead not guilty for a lot of serious offences. On that basis, we'd be forced to reduce the penalty for sexual violation uh, from the 20 years it is now. I'm not proposing that, and I don't believe anybody in this House really believes that that would lead to more people uh, admitting their guilt. This does have, um, I believe, a deterrent effect, although the, it's been stated previously that... Um, that corrections was labelled as saying that there was no deterrence. Well, no. The, the papers actually referred to that when corrections did its calculations on the number of beds it would need extra for prisons, it hadn't taken into account any deterrence effect, and that's because it has to work off what it knows. What we're talking about here are our worst recidivist violent offenders. 50 beds needed in 10 years, or around about that number. That's, oh, sorry, um, after five years, sorry. Uh, that's the sort of numbers we're talking about. We're not talking about your run-of-the-mill uh, silly criminal. You're talking about very serious violent offenders who will not learn and who will always create victims. And that's what's important. That's what this is meant to address. Chris Hipkins. 